iHeartRadio presents Podversations, a weekly discussion with the biggest names and influencers in podcasting. Hey, everybody, and thank you so much for hanging out with us again for another session of the iHeartRadio Podcast Network Speaker Series. This is the uh, easily my most favorite time of the week where I get to sort of stop uh, everything and take a half an hour and talk to some creators that we are doing business with, have launched a show with, are making content with. And these have turned into just awesome conversations. We've been able to talk to Malcolm Gladwell and Martha Stewart and Charlemagne the God and everybody about why they choose audio to tell stories, why they choose podcasting to tell stories, where they come from, what drives them creatively. Today's uh, session is super cool. I get to talk to Vanessa and Jonah Bayer. First of all, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me for half hour. Thank you. So you're sort of like, don't need an introduction, Vanessa. You're Emmy nominated seven seasons on SNL. You wrote a children's book called How Do You Care for a Very Sick Bear? How have you been spending quarantine? Like what, what's going on? What are you, what are you well, doing more of in the last... What feels like 18 years, but it's like a year and a half. <laughs> yes. Well, thank you for mentioning my Emmy nomination. And um, I appreciate that. And, um, you know, I've been, I'm actually um, developing a new show for, for Showtime. And um, so we we're actually, we're in the writer's room right now. And so been working on that and that's been incredibly fun. And I never knew that I could have um, such busy Zoom work days, but here we are. So I've been working on that. And, and before we started the writer's room, I was mostly, um, you know, catching up on a lot of my important shows, such as um, Real Housewives, um, you know, General Hospital, uh, real, real hard hitting stuff. I think that 99.7% of America doesn't know what a writer's room is. What is that? And how the heck do you do it on Zoom? That's such a really great point because I will talk to my friend, like some of my friends from home about it. And they're like, what are you doing? Oh yeah. Every morning I, I run I, away from my kids and wife and I'm like, I'm sorry, I've got to go into the writer's room. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, we're very Hollywood. Anyways, yeah. I, it basically it's a, it's a, it's a room of a group of people and you basically write out a whole season of a show together and you do what's called breaking the story and you, you know, come up with the, the, plot of each episode and um it's very fun and very exciting and also can be challenging especially once you get to you know endings endings of episodes endings of seasons always hard to write hard on zoom like i i imagine that process is really hard creative well, anyway you're giving and taking and collaborating a bunch with other people but on zoom how does it even work i assume most of it's on zoom now because it it's on work. zoom yeah you know i have to say even sometimes my eyes get a little strained, but, um, and so I've been trying to really remember to wear blue light glasses, but, um, hot tip, but, you know, overall it, we have such a fun group of people that it's felt, um, it's felt fine. And actually most of them I've never met in person. So I only know, like, we're, we're going to have an in-person just like, you know, grab a drink thing soon. And I can't even imagine how tall each person is. I feel like that's going to be so shocking. <laughs> I've met people on the uh, same thing recently. We just did the, uh, the iHeartRadio music festival in Las Vegas, which was an amazing sort of return to live. And there were people I met in real life. And I was like, there is no way you're seven feet tall right now. How That's is that the thing. Everybody's so much taller yeah. than you yeah. would think they would be. Astonishing, except me. I'm actually shorter somehow. Oh, Jonah, interesting. <laughs> you're a writer, you're a podcaster, you're a musician, you've written for Rolling Stone, Travel and Leisure. When we sort of prep for this a little bit, I think one of the most interesting things about you, and I, I, I think this is awesome, is that you're currently a graduate student in a mental health program. Tell me about that. I, I, I can't imagine a, a more timely <laughs> subject matter than, than that one right now. Is it weird to be studying something where you're like, everything is applicable all the time? What, what's <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's a crazy time uh, to be kind of learning about mental health. But um, yeah, I mean, I worked, as you said, kind of in the music industry for a long time, doing a lot of interviews with musicians um, and podcasts. And so um, I feel like mental health was just a subject that kept coming up um, kind of organically. I feel like I get so many press releases from bands, you know, writing about it. And so, yeah, I moved 
I left New York City. I moved out um, to Western Mass. I was kind of trying to kind of transition to something new. And um, yeah, I got really interested in mental health, got in, you know enrolled in a clinical mental health counseling program. And I'm kind of doing a practicum right now, working in an outpatient clinic and taking courses. And um, I'd like to actually work with kind of bands and musicians and once I'm licensed. But yeah, it's been a really interesting time. And it's there's a lot of similarities between a therapeutic interview and a, a band interview, but it's also very different. Um, like if I was doing a band interview and someone was like, this new record sounds really heavy, I wouldn't be like, it sounds like the record sounds heavy. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like, there are different techniques, but it's been really fun to kind of um, change things up and kind of get outside my comfort zone. And it's, yeah, it's been really interesting. Are you generally really worried for like, all of humanity coming out of quarantine, <laughs> no, knowing probably a little more than the rest of us regarding mental health? Or are you like, oh, we'll be okay? I don't think I know and more than anyone else. I think you, you both definitely know as much as I do. I, I don't know. I mean, I think there's much more um, like attention to it now. I think that, you know, self-care and all these terms have really become into more into the public consciousness. Um, so I think there's more awareness around it, less stigma. Um, but yeah, I think it's a really hard time for a lot of people. Um, a lot of situations. So I think, yeah, just, you know, a little empathy goes a long way, but um, yeah, hopefully, hopefully we're coming on the other side of it soon. So to go to the other side of things, the, the funnier, lighter side of things, you both are really, really funny people. And it's not entirely what the show's about. The show's about a lot of stuff that we'll get into, but I want to stick with you for a second, Jonah. Where did that come from? Was there a a, a parent, an uncle, an aunt, a friend as a kid where you were like, you're really funny. I see you making other people laugh. I want to be that. I want to learn. Like, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm like making up your origin story right now. Where, where did, <laughs> where did that come from where you were, you got this sort of funny gene or skill or whatever you want to call it? Well, I think Vanessa will agree that it definitely came from our dad. And I feel like we've, you know, only released a few episodes of the podcast so far, but I feel like we've already talked about our dad so much <laughs> because it's just like this treasure trove of stories from us growing up that are so funny. Um, you know, for example, our dad's name is Todd. He thinks he's the original Todd. He thinks he's the first person ever named Todd. It's something, you know, he talks about that's something we talk about on the podcast. So I would say probably our dad. Um, and I feel like Vanessa kind of, you know, early on, we do a lot of impressions of our teachers and that kind of stuff too. And I think she definitely got it from, I won't put words in her mouth, but that's my kind of impression. What do you think, Vanessa? Was it also your dad? Yeah, I think our dad a lot. Like we really, he on purpose mostly, but sometimes not on purpose, always really made us laugh. And, you know, he was always like doing impressions for his friends and stuff. And he's, he's just a very funny guy. And, and I think we always like really loved we always loved um you know he would always make us laugh and and still does and um also our family was very very into Chris Farley I didn't want to I didn't want to not mention that like whole family would go watch like Tommy Boy and all that stuff and and like really took it in to the point where like our dad still says like son of a like there's a lot of Chris Farley phrases are kind of like embedded in our in our family in the fabric of our family what did your dad do <laughs> what was his job Oh boy. Uh, well, <laughs> <laughs> and this is the last 20 minutes of the interview. Let's just hear about Bob. He sold like cranes and winches. And then when we were young, he left and he started his own business uh, where we worked. I worked at a lot in high school. It was like a packaging factory. Mm. So it was like shrink wrapping stuff um, and piece work. It was like not, not very exciting work, but um yeah, he was. He had this business. I don't know how Vanessa. How would you describe it? There were a lot of um, like very interesting people that would like work work at his business, and he would come home with these like crazy stories. And a lot of our friends in high school would like work there over the summer, and and um, I think they called it like the box factory. And and there's a lot of packaging. It just, I just feel like um, he was always he's always been kind of like the star of these like companies that he's worked at because yeah. he is like a very endearing guy. And, um, and just, I think he, he really is like a, very much a people person, but then there was, you know, between when he worked at this hoisting crane company and when he started his own business, there were some like ventures in between that he was looking into that we, we talk about on our, on our first episode with Beck Bennett, that like, you know, uh, there was, there was talk of, of running a Dunkin' Donuts franchise and, um, a lot of, a lot of really interesting stuff. <laughs> yeah. 
I don't want to overlook the Chris Farley piece. So why, why that? Why was why, why did he strike a nerve with your family? Vanessa, I'll, I'll stick with you for a sec. What was it about his comedy? I mean, we just found him to be so funny and so uh, just so endearing. And like, I don't know, we were just obsessed with him. Like we would watch Tommy Boy. We would watch Black Sheep. We, we were just like, uh, just everything that came out of his mouth was so funny. The way that he was able to sort of like make fun of himself and yeah, just I, as- I think- yeah, I think that I would say like also like those movies kind of came out like the right time, like the age we were at was like we really connected with. It was so impressionable, I think. Do you think, uh, Jonah, Chris Farley, one of the best ever? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. I mean, I think that stuff has really has really, I mean, h- held up. I mean, yeah, it's uh, shockingly funny even today. Yeah. It's like, wow, this yeah. is actually as good as I thought it was. So. Speaking of uh, looking back and nostalgia, a lot of this podcast is about that. Um, it's funny in podcasting, there's, it's not this show, but there's a whole genre of podcasting. And Joni, you've been podcasting, you've seen this too, but like we call them sort of rewatch podcasts, Office Ladies, Fake Doctors, Real Friends is about scrubs. We just launched another one called Drama Queens on One Tree Hill. How would I frame it. They're podcasts where the casts of older shows come together and talk about those shows. It's really that simple a setup. These have exploded as a subgenre of podcasting. It, besides maybe comedy and news and crime, is the biggest subgenre in podcasting. And it's truly unique to podcasting. It feels all like a lens into just feel good nostalgia content it's sort of like a fire that we can all sit around and talk and look at well we're really just hanging out together and that's the excuse for getting together so nostalgia is not new to podcasting at least not too new this is a little bit of the same ilk it's called your show is called how did we get weird um inevitably it's a lot of looking back where we come from the origin stories we've been talking about today but vanessa how, is is it is it your dad that made you guys weird? How did you get weird? Why'd you pick this? And and more more interesting than me, why'd you pick this topic of nostalgia? Looking back and seeing where you came from. Well, Jonah and I really, I think it was a mixture of our dad and where we grew up, and maybe and our mom, and just like the per, I don't know the the personalities that we were born with. I don't know exactly what it was, but. We really, um, we just have so many funny and interesting memories from growing up. And as we've become adults, like this thing has happened where like we would randomly text, like Jonah will text me and be like, you know, do you, (laughs) can't remember the last one that he did because now we have this podcast. So we do it on here, but like, you know, do you remember like skip it or something? Or like, did we used to get lunchable? Like, like there's all this stuff or like, do you remember the time that like, I don't know. And and I, and what I found from this is I do have like a very good memory for a lot of this stuff, but we just like, will randomly ask each other if we remember things and like, there will just be like, you know, we won't have talked for a couple of weeks and then I'll get a text from Jonah. That's like, do you remember the time that like this thing happened? And it's just so fun to talk about that stuff. And I think, um, I don't know if we, I don't know that we necessarily, even started doing it more over the pandemic or anything. I think it's just like a thing that we've been doing since we didn't live in the same house, you know, since we've grown up. Jonah, what do you think? What What's important about, I don't want to call it like a nostalgia podcast because it's not just that, but what's important about that element of it? Why, why is that the way in? Well, I think that's a really good question. I mean, I think it was, you know, me and Vanessa have worked together in the past and I think we really wanted to kind of do something together. Um, like a podcast and we really wanted it to have um, some sort of thematic feel. So it wasn't just a sort of just like, I don't know, making small talk or whatever. And I felt like, yeah, this is kind of like the thing that we, I just feel like I came back to was like, we talk a lot about these childhood stories. I feel like, um, you know, I'll, I'll, you know, be telling some of my wife and, and we'll start, you know, talking about something from when, me and Vanessa were kids and I'll have to look it up on Wikipedia. You know, and now with Wikipedia, you're like, oh my God, I can look at this. Oh my gosh, I can see this commercial for it. So I feel like that's just something naturally we were doing. 
And then when the podcast idea kind of came along, we were like, well, we're kind of doing all this research anyways, for no reason at all. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. well, why don't we actually we like, get paid for this? Yeah, totally. So, um, so I felt like it was a kind of a natural kind of progression for us. And Vanessa, I mean, not to switch gears too fast, but was it weird to go into a medium that's audio only? A very visual performer. It's not, it's not all you do, but I mean, inc- really visual performer on SNL and otherwise. And podcasting is exploding. You have 100 million Americans a month listening to a podcast. It's, it, it's got crazy mass reach now. But is it a resetting of how you do your craft, how you make content, you're, you're reminding yourself it's just audio, just audio. I got to do things I wouldn't normally do or no easy. It's been pretty easy. I mean, I will say sometimes I, I have to remember, I, I, you know, like to, to tell the listening audience, if someone made a face or is doing something that was visual, you know, and tell them about it. But I feel like, be, especially because I'm talking to Jonah and I'm so comfortable doing that, it just feels, and I'm so comfortable talking to Jonah about things that are, you know, like commercials and things from the nineties and stuff like that. It feels, it feels pretty natural. So siblings, um, I, I was the last of seven kids, um, but a lot of kids, Irish Catholic family, um, but we still were sort of in groups, pairs. And I was paired with uh, essentially the, my sister closest to me in age. And I, not to suggest this is similar to you guys at all, but there's certainly, there, there is a closeness there between siblings who are close in age that's truly unique. I, I, no matter how angry we might get at each other, no, honestly, no matter how long we may go uh, between talking to each other, it doesn't sound like you guys go very long. Um, it doesn't seem to matter. And um, but I can't imagine working with her. <laughs> I don't know that I could. I think I might, um, we might get at each other. How is that like for you guys? Is it Jonah? Is that, is it, is it a blessing? Is it like, well, sometimes it's, you need a break. <laughs> What's it like? Yeah. I mean, I feel, it feels very kind of like low pressure. Like, I feel like we're generally kind of on the same page and me and Vanessa used to do a web series together um, where we we worked with musicians. And um, so I think we're kind of familiar working with each other and we generally have like a similar sensibility. So it's not, um, I don't really think it's ever really stressful or ever really getting sick of each other. Um, To me, it's like sort of like a nice excuse for us to be able to kind of like carve aside some time to kind of talk and a lot of the people a lot of the guests on the podcast are also kind of people we know are friends of ours so um yeah it doesn't I haven't had the experience of it being but I know I know what you're saying um, <laughs> yeah, so I, like, I don't want you to feel weird but I don't <laughs> feel that at all Vanessa what about you is it is it is it awesome it's pretty fun I yeah I mean I, I think the other piece of it is that like we really are in different professionally, like we're really in different worlds. Jonah has always been more in the music world and I've been more in the comedy world. So, and I feel like, um, comedians kind of want to be musicians and musicians kind of want to be comedians. So it's like, we're, we're, it's very much like, you know, I've always just thought what Jonah does is so much cooler. Like I've, you know, and I don't know, I'm not, I don't want to put words in his mouth and say that what he thinks, what I do is cooler, but like, it's just like, we've been we've always been in these separate worlds and it's really, I mean, even like, um, you know, like the fact that we can get on our podcast, uh, like guests from both of those worlds has been so much fun. And, um, it was so funny because even when I, when I was on SNL, Jonah would come to shows sometimes and like the bands and their managers and stuff would know Jonah and they'd be like, Oh, you're Jonah's sister. Like, it, like even though, like I was on SNL, I was Jonah's sister. All the, and like, it, it like, so it's, I feel like because like, you know, we're, we're in these two separate worlds, it, it professionally, it really, it really always feels like so fun to get to kind of work together. I'm going to ask two sort of non sequitur questions, but they're, they're, I'm just personally curious about them. Vanessa, are you, are you somebody who, who sits and watches SNL as a fan and, or is it too, um, I don't know, nerve wracking. It does it take you back to what I imagine, you know, really hard work. Like, what's that like? I do watch it sometimes. I don't always watch it. I, I, um, you know, I, if I can catch it because I still have a fair amount of friends on it. I like to see it sometimes. Um, sometimes I'll be like, uh, I'll have like, I'll, I can tell who wrote what and, and whatever. And um, sometimes like they'll have like, um, you know, a celebrity coming on and, and playing a character that I'm like this cast member who I'm friends with should have played that character. Like I have like these strong opinions about things, (laughs) but, 
Um, I do like watching it. I will say like, I just, I, I was just, um, doing an interview for something else. And, and someone asked me about like an upcoming host and I had no, and I was like, oh, I wasn't there when they host. Like, I, I feel like I'm not as up to date on the news as, um, as I should be, but, um, I do, when I see it, I do, I do usually enjoy it. It's interesting. We do a, we do a podcast called Las Culturistas with Bo and Yang. Oh, really yes. Show. A dream. It's really great. And, and he's, he's awesome. Uh, it's with Bone and Matt Rogers. And um, it's just interesting the way that, again, I don't want to put words in his mouth, but the way that he seems to describe it is SNL is a lot of work. And, uh, and it was interesting how his podcast, I was listening to him talk about it almost had become this sort of respite for him every week where he got to sort of true, be himself, let loose, hang out with Matt. And, and, and that's not why he started the podcast, but it had become that space for him. Safe space is a little bit too dramatic way to put it, but that kind of space for him every week. And I, I keep hearing this refrain from people who, whether they're well-known celebrities or just jumping into podcasting from scratch, it becomes this very intimate, authentic thing for them. Um, Jonah, back to you. This idea of mental health overlaid with musicians and you wanting to use that skill or expertise vis-a-vis -vis rock bands and musicians, what is, it sounds like an awkward way to put it, but what is specifically interesting to you about musicians' mental health? Well, I think that's a really good question. Also, I think it's, um, they have sort of like a unique set of challenges. Like I think like, um, like the lifestyle, like touring, like sort of the pressures, um, you know, the way the industry is sort of like shifting, it's so difficult to make a living. So I think that mm. as someone who, you know, I, you know, played in bands for a long time, toured a lot. Um, and so I think having someone who's had those experiences, um, you know, maybe kind of can sort of understand that a little bit more, or maybe understand because it is just such a, such a different kind of a lifestyle. And I think a lot, a big piece of it is also like this element of arrested development where like, you don't have to do a lot of things for yourself. You don't really have to have a lot of responsibilities. Things are taken care of you. And then sort of what happens when the band breaks up and you're sort of trying to figure out how to, you know, get back to a normal life or something. So I think that's kind of a unique set of challenges. And so I think having that experience is kind of what is interesting to me trying to kind of bridge that gap. Yeah, it's very true. I, I, a lot of us were. I was in a band when I was younger, and that's that pressure cooker environment of, of just intense collaboration with a few other people can be really great, can be really hard. I imagine like SNL, the same, similar mm -hmm. when you look at folks who are on the show, you're like, yep. And there's maybe a, a familiarity with each other that others might not get. But um, I'll end on podcasting. So what feels special about this medium to you. I'll start with you, Jonah. You've been doing a few of these. Like, what does podcasting let you do that other things don't? Well, what do you? Why do you think this medium is exploding so big in in the country? Yeah, I mean, I yeah, I've worked in podcasting a lot of different ways. I, I hosted my own podcast for years. I actually uh, produced a, a podcast for iHeartMedia, the Search Party Podcast with Bowen. Um, I, I worked on that, and I've actually been teaching a podcasting class at local college and an adjunct professor. So I'm really just um, from all the different angles, just really into just the way that it can sort of get people's voices out, how many different topics there are. I feel like when I started doing podcasting, maybe in 2014, people were like, what's a podcast? And now it's like everyone listens to podcasts. Everyone knows what it is. Now everyone has a podcast. Um, so I just find it just really... Um, just a cool way for people to get their voices out kind of without these kind of traditional gatekeepers and just people to kind of gravitate towards the interests they like and find new perspectives. And, um, you know, I, my favorite podcast, I'm just like, just excited every time they pop up in my feed, you know, it's like a little kind of like a little kind of jolt of like excitement. So that's sort of, that's sort of my, my thoughts. Vanessa, so you have a podcast. It's part of Will Ferrell's podcast network, Big Money Players, no less. What's what does the medium let you do that you feel like, oh wow, this I don't get to do this that much in other stuff. What's special about it? Well, you know, I I really love listening to podcasts because you can listen to them while you're doing other things. And I feel like, you know, it, it makes 
I, for example, I hate cleaning and it makes cleaning so much more fun. But in terms of like recording a podcast, it's so, you know, I, I just, it's like, you really just are focusing on the conversation you're having with people. And I think that, that, um, not being like on camera and stuff kind of takes the pressure off of that. So you can just really focus on having these really genuine conversations and, um, you know, again, like doing this podcast with Jonah, it's like, we were already doing so much research on stuff yeah. from like commercials and stuff from, from our childhood that like, you know, to get to do it in this medium and to get to just like talk about it with fun guests and stuff. It's so, it's just so much, it's so much fun. Then I really appreciate the time that you guys have uh, sat and talked with me. This is uh, for anyone listening or watching. Uh, uh, this is an amazing show. Um, how do we get weird? Vanessa, Jonah Bayer, siblings in real life, siblings on the podcast too. As it <laughs> I guess. Um, yeah. But you guys are awesome. It's been sometimes you you do get a feeling in our in our company and among the the production team making shows when it feels like we're about to put out something especially cool. There's a sort of a buzz of, among the staff, and this definitely has that going because I because I think it merits it. So deeply appreciate you hanging out with me and talking with about me uh, about it. Thank you so much. Thanks so much, so Connell, much fun. Thank you. Yeah, this is great. Thanks, everybody. I'm Connell, CEO of the iHeartMedia Digital Audio Group. Thanks for hanging out with us. We will see you next week. Take care. Podversations is a production of iHeartRadio. You can find more from the biggest names in podcasting on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts.